So what's up guys, it's Harry here via Nino or Quadigy, and welcome back to a video of Call of Duty Vanguard. Vanguard has finally released on all platforms and I'm actually currently on my PC. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys the best PC settings slash controller settings slash audio settings, basically, basically just the best settings for you to optimize your gameplay here in Call of Duty Vanguard. I've been known to get many, many nukes, especially on the beta, in case you guys were wondering, I dropped around like eight nukes. And with all that skill-based matchmaking and everything, you know, that's a pretty hard thing to do. So if you guys wanna learn how to be the best player, then you gotta learn how to optimize your settings. That's what I'm here for. So if you guys are excited to see my best settings on Call of Duty Vanguard for controller, audio, PC, and you could take these settings and apply them anywhere else. You know, if you're on Xbox or PS5 or PS4 or whatever, you, get, you can take some of these settings and apply them to yourself as well. If you guys are excited for all this, make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe if you do, and turn on those post vacations. I'll be uploading Vanguard like crazy on the channel, so make sure you guys do stay subscribed as we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for being here. Without further ado, let's, uh, let's go ahead and see what we gotta change. So for our keyboard and mouse here, we're not gonna be playing on keyboard and mouse. So all of these settings right here are kind of uh, superfluous to us. So I'm gonna be on controller. You guys are gonna have to watch somebody else if you guys want like mouse and keyboard and mouse inputs. But first of all, let's start with graphics. For, for display mode, I personally have full screen borderless because it gives me the least amount of problems when I'm recording and like uh, trying to get gameplay and stuff. Uh, most people would prefer to have it on full screen. If you don't record or, you know, stream or do stuff, I would say just regular full screen is your way to go. But if you record and do stuff on one monitor, and uh, then, you know, I would go full, full screen borderless. It, does, it really doesn't affect your gameplay all that much. It's really nice, so. Um, sync every frame, V-Sync, you can put that off. You don't need that on. Uh, frame rate limit custom. I put mine up to 200 because I go up to like 150 FPS more, more or less. And I'm, I'm at 144 FPS cap because that's what my monitor is at. So I just put it at 200. Menu and minimize game should be 60 and 30. Nvidia reflex low latency should be enabled, not enabled plus boost. Uh, display resolution, have that at 1080p because that's what I play on. Uh, if you have 1440 or whatever, you know, put that on. You know, pretty much just what your monitor can, you know, put out best. Display gamma, leave that at 2.2. Focus mode off, focus mode opacity one. Your display adapter should be whatever your graphics card is. And on-demand texture streaming, I just have that on. Uh, next up, we got quality. And for quality presets, I have it to custom. I have my render resolution at 100 and my VRAM usage target at 90%. If you start getting dev errors or whatever the case is, you can lower this to like 80 or 70, but most of all, you should be okay at 90 uh, in most situations. For my texture resolution, I have it at medium because I want to be able to see the map a lot better. I have texture filter anisotropic at high, particle, particle quality level at low, particle resolution low, bullet impacts and sprays off, tessellation off, level of detail medium, level of detail low, level of detail low, uh, volumetric quality level low and basically all of these uh settings are just so that i have can maximize my frames while being able being able to see the game as clear as possible because i still want to you know make out opponents whenever i see them so that's pretty much what these settings are for i have it low low on for cache spot shadows spot cache size off cache sun shadows on spot shadow quality low particle colliding low ambient occlusion low or off i should say gtao low screen space reflection off and then anti-aliasing should be on smaa t2x don't have it on filmic and then filmic strike should be off because this actually makes the game kind of blurry so make sure you guys uh, have all these on to have the best quality the best amount of frames possible on your pc and you can still see the game pretty well for color customization i highly recommend you change the colors to you know your color to yellow here the team color should be like a light blue here the party color should be green by default and the enemy color this one's very important you should have it at maximum red for some reason on the on the beta i remember it was on like one of these two colors don't do that just have it on a solid red you'll be able to see your opponents a lot easier so leave that all that there field of view i personally play on 120 f you know, FOV because I love having maximum frames. Some people go between 110 and 120, like 115. I just say go all the way, but this is personal preference. If you wanna see as much of the game as possible, then increase that FOV. It, it won't hurt you that much if you have a very good PC. If you have a lower, you know, end PC, maybe 100 to 110 might be your way, but trust me, that works a lot. For ADS field of view, the difference between independent and affected is that if you have independent, then when you zoom in, like when you aim down sights, 
then everything is going to be able to make it easier for you to see far range opponents because then your FOV lowers to 80 when you're zooming in. And that's very good because when you have a lower FOV, you can get you can you can make out long range of ta uh, targets a lot more easier. If you have affected, then you're still going to have like 120 FOV when you're aiming down sights, but that's going to make it hard for you to look at long range opponents at in certain distances. So I just like having an independent so I can make out my targets if I'm challenging somebody at far range. Camera movement should be at 50% because you don't want all that ca camera movement. And then world motion blur and weapon motion blur and depth of field should all be off. All What these do is that depth of field, out of focus regions will ap appear blurry. You do not want your out of focus regions to appear blurry. You got to see where your environment is and see where enemies are at. For world motion blur and we weapon motion blur, if the game is all blurry, then you won't be able to make out your opponents in like the corners of your eyes or if they're like around a door or something. So you just want to have it off so you can look at the game clearly. I never understood this. This is probably just only good for campaign if you want to put it on campaign, but in multiplayer in a competitive setting, you do not want to have this on. Next up, we got audio settings and we got the master volume at 100% because obviously I want to be able to sound for everything. Music volume low, so it's not too distracting. Dialogue volume, I have it at 50. I could put it even lower just because uh, the, the announcer would be kind of annoying sometimes, but it is good for call outs at times as well. And then for sound effects volume, I have it at 100 because I want to be able to hear those footsteps as much as possible. So pretty much leaving everything off except for sound effects volume is going to help you a lot in hearing uh, freaking, you know, footsteps and stuff. For audio mix, I have it at headphones, killstreak music, I got it on non. Um, everything here doesn't matter, yeah. Uh, interface, uh, you can put on subtitles. I like to play with subtitles on, the only reason I have them off is for like, uh, thumbnails and stuff. But I feel like the subtitles in this game get a little too, too much. So if you want to make sure you don't miss a call out, you know, if people are announcing it, you can just look at it on the bottom of the screen. But they do get kind of uh, in the way if you're trying to get gameplay, which kind of sucks in this game anyways. Um, and then what else do we got here? FPS counter should be shown, server latency shown, packet loss shown, uh, connection meter should be shown, and GPU temperature should be shown as well. This is basically just to help you know if you're lagging or not in game. That's what I like about it personally. So that's what I have there. And then minimap shape should be square. A square minimap is a lot better than a round minimap because if you have a circle minimap, then that's going to give you less, whatchamacallit, less, uh, less area. Like, a circle gives you less area than a square, you know, so you want to see as much of your minimap as possible, so that's why we have square. Uh, minimap rotation on, and all of that doesn't matter. And I just skipped the intro movie because, uh, screw, uh, you know, the intro freaking loading up every time. And you definitely want to have in-game alert icons. And then finally, we have controller settings, and for our controller settings, we are on 8 and 8 sensitivity. This is, you know, freaking personal preference. I like 8 and 8 because that's how I aim well. And, you know, left to right, up and down. It's just, like, not too slow and not too fast. You can play on 20 if you want, or you can play on 1. Just know that it's all personal preference at the end of the day. For your ADS sensitivity multiplier, I like it at 0.90 because this allows my aim to be a lot more sticky when I'm aiming down sights. So I tend to have it for low zoom 2x and 3x to all be 0.90 because... I definitely want my aim to be a little more sticky, but when I'm using the, the 4x and higher zoom optics, you know, for some reason if I pick it up from an enemy and they're just like too, too slow, then I like to put up the, the multiplier because then it's not as slow, which is awesome. And then for button layout preset, I play on bump, bumper jumper tackle flip. And the whole reason for doing that is that pretty much, and you know, on by flipping it, basically I can jump with L2 with this bumper right here and then I can aim down sights with the L1 and then this pretty much just allows me to drop like jump shot and drop shot extremely easily like with my PS4 controller or I could be playing on PS5 controller as well uh, it, it just makes it easier for me it allows me to be a, a very very powerful opponent I don't need to buy a scuff like see I don't have any special like icons or, or special buttons on my controller I just be bodying fools and that's what really helps me it might get a while to get used to but I'm trusting you like like bumper jumper tactical flip is the way to go uh, aim response curve type, you gotta put on dynamic, it's the best way to get sticky aim on your opponents. Controller vibration off, uh, target aim assist is on, so I can aim down sights on my opponents really well. Um, automatic sprint off, you, don't, you do not want to have automatic sprint on. It just, when, you, when you're rushing and you, you run into a camper, that sprint to fire speed is going to screw you over. So you, you do not want to have uh, automatic sprint on. And then slide behavior should be tap. 
because if you can slide at the tap of your button instead of a hold, then that's a lot more responsive and a lot more quicker. And then for interact slash reload behavior, do prioritize reload because in this case, if you're out of ammo, then you can quickly get a gun like off the ground extremely quickly. And that's what's really nice. You can get guns off the ground really quickly at the tap of the button. You can also open and close doors at the tap of the button. But if you need to reload fast, you can also do that at the tap of the button as long as you're not next to like a door or a gun or whatever. It's really, really nice. I really love this feature a lot. And then uh, for your left trigger and right trigger dead zone, I just have it at zero because I want to be able to be as responsive as possible with my triggers. That's why I have it on that. And then for left stick and right stick minimum input dead zone, I have it at five just in case I do get some stick drift. You, you do not want to have it too high because that's going to make your controller less responsive. So just having it at five is like a perfect sweet spot. And I believe that should be it. So yeah, that is all my PC controller and audio and graphic settings here on Call of Duty Vanguard. Let me know what you guys think about them. Let me know if this helps you, you know, become a better player because I definitely play like this and I play extremely well, you know. Not to, you know, to anybody's horn, but I, I've used a, a good amount of the guns on this game and I can say they're really amazing, so... Yeah, hopefully we have a great year of Vanguard. You know, hopefully you can join me on my quest to 100k every single freaking day. I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart for all the support in Modern Warfare 2019 and Cold War. And I just hope we can keep it going here for the rest of the Vanguard era. Just, just thank you for being beautiful big ballers. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that may be. Follow me over on Twitch and on TikTok at the Mark of a Hero. And if these helped you, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe. You guys are all beautiful and amazing. And I'll see you guys on the next one. I love you all. I